Welcome to the Oracle Enterprise Manager video training series. This is a video recording of Oracle Enterprise Manager with a focus on integration with third-party management systems. My name is Carolyn Louie and I'm a Principal Product Manager for Enterprise Manager. The program agenda is as follows. We will provide a brief introduction of the various ways Enterprise Manager can integrate with third-party systems. Then we will go over in detail what's involved for each solution. Enterprise Manager has a number of management connectors to integrate with popular third-party management systems. The management connectors leverage EM's connector framework in order to forward event and incident details to third-party systems. Besides the management connectors, Enterprise Manager also has a number of advanced notification methods when a use case is more complicated or when there is no management connector available. Enterprise Manager is highly extensible and provides a connector framework API which leverages web service calls to create and update events or tickets in third-party systems. We also provide an integration guide for you to build your own connector should you ever need to. Let's start with an overview of management connectors. Enterprise Manager Cloud Control provides management connectors to integrate with the most popular third-party management systems. There are two types of connectors. One is a service desk connector for our ticketing system vendors. This type of connector allows EM to automatically create service desk tickets in response to Enterprise Manager incidents. Another type of connector is an event connector for our event management vendors. This type of connector allows EM to forward events to third-party management systems, of which the third-party system processes the event payload and decides what to do with it. There are seven connectors available in EM13C, which is shown on the right-hand side of the screen. For HP, we have connectors available for both Service Manager and Operations Manager. So what does an EM connector allow you to do? In essence, it allows you to forward the events and incidents detected by Enterprise Manager to an outside events management or service desk system. It is via this fashion that the connector allows you to see incidents and monitoring information spanning across multiple systems in one location. Support processes are streamlined because there is one help desk system to triage. Last but not least, having all the relevant information in one place allows you to conduct cross-platform root cause analysis and diagnosis in a more efficient manner. Here are the key features for service desk connectors. The service desk connector forwards EM incidents from EM to the third-party ticketing system. Doing so will trigger the automatic creation of service desk tickets on the third-party system. Lifecycle of the incident is synchronized between EM and the third-party system, which means as the severity changes to the incident in Enterprise Manager, the equivalent ticket is updated as well on the other system. All service desk connectors have a feature to launch the service desk ticket from within Enterprise Manager's web-based UI. This is what we call an in-context launch of the service desk ticket. On the other hand, the Enterprise Manager incident can also be launched from the third-party ticketing system because a link to the incident will be forwarded as part of the payload. For both service desk and event connectors, there is default templates made available from EM, so you can utilize these templates to create, update, and close tickets on the third-party management system. These templates can be modified and customized to suit your needs, and you can also create a new custom template if desired. All of EM's connectors have a retry feature, which allows for tolerance from system faults. For example, if there was a network hiccup and the forwarded incident was not acknowledged by the receiving third-party system, EM will retry forwarding of the incident until an acknowledgement was received or the retry period has expired. When you enable the retry option, you can specify whether you want to resend a create or update request if the request fails the first time, and specify the time period after which you want to abandon the retry. Enterprise Manager retries every two minutes until the request is successful or the retry interval expires. Similar to service desk connectors, event connectors will forward event information from EM to third-party event management systems. Lifecycle of the event is synchronized between EM and the third-party management system, which means as the severity changes to the event in Enterprise Manager, the equivalent event in the third-party system is updated as well. 
Similar to service desk connectors, the third-party event will have a URL reference to see the source event detail in Enterprise Manager. The only difference is since this is not a ticket, there will not be a ticket ID reference from Enterprise Manager. Instead, the last comment field will indicate the event has been successfully updated on the external system through the connector. Default templates are provided for each event management system connector to create and update the event on the third-party system. These templates are customizable and this is where field mapping can be changed as well. As mentioned previously, all of EM's connectors have a retry feature. This feature ensures delivery via retry for failed requests, which allows for tolerance from third-party system unavailability. This is an overview of all the connectors available from Enterprise Manager and the third-party vendor versions supported. As always, please check the Enterprise Manager documentation for updates on the latest releases supported. The documentation link will be provided at a later slide. This is an example of a ticketing connector in use. In this case, it is the ServiceNow connector. What we are looking at is the Enterprise Manager incident details, which has both the EM incident ID and ServiceNow ticket ID. Behind the scenes, what's happening is when an event is detected in Enterprise Manager, an incident is created which triggers the ServiceNow connector to create a ticket in ServiceNow. From Enterprise Manager, the user can click on the ServiceNow ticket ID, which will prompt the user to log into ServiceNow in order to see the ticketing details and take any actions necessary. A similar link is available from within the ServiceNow ticket in order to launch Enterprise Manager to see the incident details. This is an example of an event management system connector in use. In this case, it is the HP Operations Manager connector. What you see here is an event detected by Enterprise Manager, where the memory utilization has crossed the warning threshold. This triggers an event role to invoke the connector to forward the event to HP Operations Manager. On the receiving end, once HP Operations Manager has received the event, it will have an event record which is viewable from its console. Notice that the event details are identical, including the reported date, event class, event name, and target type, as all of this information has been forwarded as is from EM. If we click on the URL, it will bring us to Enterprise Manager's Event Details page. For more information about connectors, please visit the online documentation library. Here you will find a connector guide for each of our connectors, with each guide detailing the supported versions, installation and configuration instructions, how to work with the event or ticketing templates, field mapping, troubleshooting tips, and much more. We have completed the overview for management connectors. We always recommend to our customers that if there is a connector available, then it is the best way to integrate with third-party systems. Connectors are easy to set up and configure and does not require a lot of effort. But for more complicated use cases, or when there is no management connector available for the third-party system, we recommend our customers to look into advanced notification methods. The next topic on our agenda is advanced notification methods. In Enterprise Manager, we allow our customers to define their own custom notification methods. Custom notification methods require more upfront work, however, they are more flexible to suit your needs. For example, you have a ticketing system with an exposed API that can be called to create a ticket. A custom notification method can be created to call an operating system script that has the appropriate APIs. Once a custom notification method is defined, whenever an administrator needs to send alerts to the third-party ticketing system, he simply needs to invoke the globally available notification method. This is just one example. There are three ways to build a custom notification method, and we will cover each one of them. The first method is building an OS command script. An OS command script is a script which runs on the host where the Oracle Management Service, or OMS, resides. This script is run by the user who started the management service and needs to be deployed to the host where the OMS lives. How this works is when an event matches the conditions defined in an event rule, the event rule triggers the custom OS command script. The script gets event information via environment variables, and this information is then forwarded to the third-party system. There are four steps to configure an OS command script. 
First, you create the script, and then you deploy the script to each OMS host. Then, you create a new OS command from EM and point to the location of the script, which effectively registers it as a new notification method. Lastly, you create a new event role and then assign the OS command as the action to take when the event matches the conditions specified in the role. Effectively, what this does is allow Enterprise Manager to trigger the OS command script each time the event conditions are matched to the role, which results in the event information being forwarded to the third-party system. For detailed instructions, please visit our online documentation. The second method is an SNMP trap. Just like the OS command, SNMP trap is another way to forward event information to a third-party system. In order to do this, the third-party system must accept incoming SNMP traps. How this works is you will set up an SNMP trap method on EM as the sender and the third-party system as the receiver. When an event matches the conditions defined in the role, EM notification system invokes the SNMP trap, which forwards the event to the third-party system. We support both SNMP v1 and v3 traps. v3 is a more secure protocol and is supported starting from EM12104. There are three simple steps to set up an SNMP v1 trap. First, you create an SNMP v1 trap notification method from Enterprise Manager. Next, the notification method is tested by sending a test trap, which can be achieved by clicking on the Test SNMP Trap button from within Enterprise Manager. After verifying the trap is received, the final step is to add the SNMP Trap notification method to an event rule. For more information, please visit our online documentation. The configuration steps for SNMP v3 is very similar to v1, except there are a couple of additional steps to provide an additional layer of security. Steps 2, 4, and 5 is the same as SNMP v1. Steps 1 and 3 involve enabling the OMS to send SNMP traps and defining user security settings for SNMP trap notifications. There are five steps to configure an SNMP v3 trap. The first step is to enable the OMS to send such traps. For SNMP v3, the OMS serves as an SNMP agent, which sends traps to the SNMP manager that is monitoring all SNMP agents deployed in the network. The second step is to create an SNMP v3 notification method from EM. Third, create a user security model entry, which allows you to configure the authentication and privacy settings of SNMP v3 messages. Fourth, verify the SNMP trap is working fine. And finally, configure event roles to use the SNMP v3 trap. For more information, please visit our online documentation. The third method is a PLSQL procedure. A PLSQL procedure is a script that runs on the Oracle Management Repository, or OMR. Similar to the previous two methods, when an event matches the event role, it triggers the PLSQL procedure, which then forwards the event to the third-party system. There are four steps to configure a PLSQL procedure. First, the PLSQL procedure should be defined to determine whether it is for events, incidents, or problems. Second, the PLSQL procedure needs to be created on the EM repository using the database account of the repository owner, such as Sysmin, because this is where it will run. Third, the PLSQL notification method needs to be created from EMUI and referenced to the fully qualified procedure name which effectively registers it. Finally, the PLSQL procedure should be assigned to an event role so it can be triggered when an event matches the role conditions. For more information, please visit our online documentation at the link you see below. We have completed the overview for advanced notification methods. Advanced notification methods should be used when there is no management connector available for the third-party system or when the use case is more complicated and complete customization is desired. Another option we will discuss is creating a custom connector. Oracle provides a connector framework which allows our customers and partners to build custom connectors using the Extensibility Development Kit, or EDK. The Extensibility Development Kit is a standalone tool designed to help with the development of Enterprise Manager extensions, such as plugins or connectors. 
The process to do this is well documented. After the custom connector is developed, you would package and deploy it to EM, then configure it. Once that happens, the connector will forward events to third-party systems when the event matches the role criteria. Not many customers take this route because there are other options available and also because this approach requires some development efforts. Customers typically rely on Oracle partners if they decide to build their own connector. There are four high-level steps to create a connector. As a first step, you need to analyze your requirements and determine what functionality to include in the connector. There is an entire section in the documentation to help determine which templates to use. After that has been decided, then you can define the connector descriptor file and then package and deploy the connector to EM. For more information, please visit the online documentation, where you will find step-by-step -step instructions along with examples. The Extensibility Exchange is an online catalog where you can find connectors from Oracle, partners, third-party vendors, and customers. This is a searchable repository of a collection of connectors, plugins, and other artifacts. This is also a place where you can share and promote your own artifacts. In the appendix section, we will cover the concept of role sets. If you're already familiar with role sets, then you may skip this section. In each and every one of the advanced notification methods, we mentioned assigning the notification method to an event role. An event role is a role that is part of a role set. In Enterprise Manager, there are two types of role sets. They are enterprise and private. Private role sets can be created by anyone and should be used when an administrator wants to be notified about something. The only action a private role set can perform is to send email to the role set owner. Enterprise role sets require the create enterprise role set privilege. Enterprise role sets should be used to implement operational practices within your IT organization, such as automating tasks and notifications. An enterprise role set automates actions related to an EN event, incident, or problem. It allows creation of an incident based on an event and provides notification actions to notify administrators. This includes forwarding of the event to third-party event management and ticketing systems. As part of a role set, you can also automate operations to manage the incident workflow, such as assigning the incident to an owner, setting priority to the incident based on a defined set of conditions, or escalate the incident. A role set can have one or more roles that apply to a common set of objects, such as targets, jobs, metric extensions, or self-updates, and take appropriate actions to automate the business processes. The roles within a role set are executed from top-down order, and so are the role sets themselves. So it's important that you organize roles and role sets in the order of which you want them to be evaluated by the EM role engine. Please take a look at our online documentation for more information about role sets. This concludes the video presentation. Thank you for watching.